Welcome to the Red V TV show, supported by Chapel House for the 2023 season. And on a short turnaround week, this week we look at potential stay-ins. I want to say incomings, but that's not the case. And potential outgoings. Um, we look at the Topsy Turvy League table. Um, and we look ahead to the visit of the Catalan Dragons on Thursday in what could be a crucial game in the race for top spot. And we also spend 10 minutes discussing how forward the pass was for our first try at Warrington. Yes. I'm no, we don't. <laughs> but we don't care, do we? No. No. Uh, nah. Stuff like that will balance itself out over the season. Uh, look at the, the, was it the one at Magic that we got pulled back for. Um, that would have been a, a legitimate try. It's just that that one probably didn't matter and this one has... Uh, pushed us on to the win. Ah, uh, well, never mind. Listen, I know it potentially cost Warrington two points, but that is only going to be the difference between finishing ninth and eighth in the table for them. So, does it really matter? You're, you're listening too much to, to my mate who has got a massive downer on on Warrington at the minute. Although, although I hope you check in on him. Oh, he rang me earlier, and he was he was more than uh, more than buoyed by the performance on Friday, and thinks that if they've got um, if they got back Cassiano, Williams, and Harrison, he said, "Oh, if we put in that level of performance, we'll beat Wigan." And I thought, "Yeah, okay, fair enough." I said that they possibly could, and after Wigan getting beat by Wakefield, it's definitely going to be Wigan by twenty now, isn't it? Yeah. Hate to break it to them, but that's what's coming on Friday for you. But we are Red VTV, not Primrose and Blue. So we will open with unconfirmed news, but it's in the Daily Mirror and they would never lie, unlike other newspapers. Um, With the news that Sione Matautier may well be extending his deal to stay at the club, Um. Listen, it's what we've heard on the grapevine for a number of weeks, isn't it? But it's the first time that it's actually been put in the real press and not Saints fans' WhatsApp groups. <laughs> um, and obviously, Paul Wellens has spoken himself, hasn't he, about how Sioni will be utilised next season, probably going into the middles. He, he had that um, spell there at Magic against Huddersfield where he played there and did well. And, and obviously, that's where Paul Wellens is looking to, to leave him next season. Yeah, he's... Um, that's it, because he's so tough, he, he can do that job. I think he's been really good on the edges, though, when he's um, filled back in there due to uh, Kurt Sirenen and Joe Batch being out. Um, but he's, he's a player who's loved by the fans. Um, you only have to see the reaction that he gets at, at at the end of games, especially when we're singing his song. Um, I think it's a, a great move on behalf of the club um, if they get it over the line. I know in the, the press conference, um, Wello was playing it a bit coy, saying that they were hoping to have it done uh, today, on Tuesday, uh, but he was going to go and have a word with Mike Rush about it and see if they could get it done within the hour. Don't necessarily buy that that's how contract negotiations work. Well, Last I heard, Mike Rush was walking around Tesco looking for a big barrow. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> I'm raging that he could only find a red pen. <laughs> um, do you get the feeling this is going to be announced before Thursday night to cheer everyone up in the build-up? Yes. Yeah, I think so. I think it'd be be uh, a good fillip for the fans that we're. we're Kind of getting back on the on the horse after a bad performance um, at Hull and a, a goodish performance against uh, Castleford in the rain. It's it's always good news when you hear that someone wants to stay with us and it's someone that we want at the club. Um, Have you just forgot the win over Warrington? Sorry? Have you just forgot the win over Warrington? No, I'm just taking that as a given. We've spoken about oh, them enough now. We've spoken about okay. them enough. This is, it isn't Primrose and Blue TV this day. Uh, <laughs> they've only beat us five out of 38. Just have they? That was what an amazing stat that is. Yeah, you've not spent all day getting that, have you? No, like so I did. Listen, like, I haven't, like I I haven't verified week. that. 
I haven't verified that at all. That was tweeted to us by someone on Twitter the last few days. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Um, does Sioni potentially moving into the middle next season solve a problem? Um, with Louis likely to be looking to retire and Louis plays when that mobile prop role um, that we like to have coming off the bench, have we looked around and potentially seen what's available and realised that there probably isn't anybody out there who... who can do that job to the standard we want at the money on offer. Um, and Sioni already being at the club can fill that role and allow us to bring in a second rower instead. Yeah, I think a lot of what you've just said there is the perfect thing that us as fans sometimes forget when it comes to a signing. That you're looking around for someone to at least keep us at the level we are, if not improve us at the money and on the contract that we need them to be. Um, and I think Sione could start at prop or at 13 if we were going with um, another big prop forward. We've also got Morgan Knowles who could fit into to kind of that swing role as well of playing prop. But, yeah, with him being at the club, we, we know us knowing how he works and him knowing how we work, you've got less of a risk when it comes to the signing and, I don't know, maybe signing someone from the NRL who then does commits an indiscretion or gets injured before they come over and isn't quite the player that you think you're signing. I think we, we tend to go one of two ways, don't we? You've obviously got, for example, Alex Walmsley and Matty Lee starting and in coming off the bench, we either go with two big props or which is potentially at the moment, Parsi and Delaney. Or the mobile one will be Parsi and Sioni down yeah. the line. And obviously, if you go with Delaney on the bench as one of your two props, you can potentially then use Sioni to spell players in, in the second row. Yeah, you could do. Um, and it, it allows George Delaney, who I think is mobile enough, um, but is young, still raw, still kind of growing and learning the game at that level. Um, I think it gives him another year before he starts becoming your bona fide fourth prop. Do we potentially look at bringing in another prop? Like a development prop? Um, obviously, Dan Norman has been that, I want to say, development role for the last couple of years. It hasn't happened for him. The rumours are that he's going to be moving to Lee next season, potentially. Um do we look to bring in another another prop um, on cheapish money in an, either a development role or do you look who's next off the rank in the academy to, to bring through? I think there'll be an eye on both. Um, I'm not entirely sure if anybody's available who'd fit that role. Is it worth giving Dan Norman another 12 months? This is These are questions not necessarily for us, but for the the coaching staff, because Dan's Can been... I, answer that one? I, I know what your answer will be to that. Absolutely not. Yeah, I know what your answer will be to that. And, and, and to be fair, that is based on having a couple of years at the club and not being able to break into that 17 at all, pretty much, and being leapfrogged by the likes of George Delaney. Uh, I feel like, and this is for the sake of Dan's career, yeah. He needs to be playing. There's no yes. point just being in, in the Saints squad and that's it. He, 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 if, he wants to, if he wants to be a professional rugby league player, he needs to go and play. And if, there, if the opportunity arises to do that at another Super League club, like Lee, who, to be fair, uh, aren't underdogs anymore. They're, they're up yeah. there at the top of the table. So if they want him, it's an absolute fantastic move for him. I suppose the issue there is if the opportunity arises. That's that's the biggest sentence in everything you've just said there. So if there is the right move for him, or he can get another contract at Saints and sit in there as fifth, sixth prop who comes in every so often, but has that aspiration to become a starting or at least an interchange prop, which I, he will do because he'll want to play rugby. Um, that's his that's his main career. He'll want to play rugby. Um, the money would have to be right, though, wouldn't it? 
Yeah. Oh, I, I, again, Basically, you've got, fifth you've got six with the salary cap. Yeah. You, you, listen, we, we aren't accountants, but you'd imagine whoever's in your squad as your fifth or sixth prop is at the lower end of, of the salaries. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's exactly right. That's that's what it will be. Um, and I think that goes without saying. It's like if you pick a fancy football team and you have you kind of load your, your first 11, or you call, call it fancy rugby, you load your first 13 with all your, your big money players. The ones on your bench tend to be who can I pick up for less? And that's kind of how rugby league works with the exception of you can't just drop people out and uh, bin them off after four weeks because they've got injured. That doesn't work. But you're right. The money's got to be right. If there is someone available, possibly we do. Or we look at it and, as I just mentioned, Morgan Knowles can kind of can prop as well. So if he could move forward and we've got enough options in the back line of James Bell, of Curtis Sirenen, of Joe Batchelor, Sioni, if need be, who can all play second row. The rumours, obviously, that um, one of the Catalan Dragons is coming over to Saints that hasn't been confirmed by the club yet, another second rower. Um, if, if we've got all them options, then we have got other players that we could slot in there. And let me make it very clear, I would rather see Morgan Knowles at prop than I would at nine. Chance to see Matt Whitley in a, on the Totally Wicked Stadium on Thursday night. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the player I'm uh, alluding to, maybe. OK, then. One that was mentioned this week as a potential outgoing from the Sydney Morning Herald. Josh Hodgson is out for the season um, at the Parramatta Eels due to a neck injury. He may not play again. And they are reportedly trying to sign Joey Lussick back to the club for the rest of this year. Why would we allow that? Yeah, exactly. It, it, it'd be absolutely ludicrous to go into the business end of the season with a 37-year-old as your only recognised hooker who has made more than two professional appearances for the club. And, and, and looking at that, it's for the rest of the year. Well, he's under contract, so what's he meant to do? Return to us next season. Because he's not going to sit, go to Parramatta to sit on the bench there then, is he? Um, it's it, it. I just don't get it, how we would even consider it. Um, yeah, exactly. you, you read some of the, the social media rumours that it's a family member who wants to go home. Um, and you think, do you know what? Is there ever in your life supporting Saints where an Australian player is linked with a... a a move back home that hasn't been because it's a family member and not themselves. <laughs> I can't think of one. It's Off always the, the family of members. Do you know what? There must be. It must be like um, what's the, what's the program on Channel Four where they all sit on the couch, and watch the telly, goggle, goggle box. box. Our fans must have the goggle box cameras in every player's house to know <laughs> the exact conversations that player X has with. His wife, girlfriend, auntie, uncle. How's your father? It's just like <laughs> unreal. But I, I just can't see it happening. And given no. that we're a couple of weeks from Wembley and ten rounds left, I don't think we've got the squad to be able to do it. And I know you've talked about Taylor Pemberton quite a lot in the past. That's an almighty risk for somebody who's not played first team rugby for us to be relying on. And you don't want to yeah. see Morgan there. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't want to see Morgan Knowles there. Um, I, I'm quite open about that. Um, I'd rather see a young hooker coming through. And if it's not P Taylor Pemberton, for whatever reason, then whoever's next off the rank, I'd rather see them there as an actual nine. Um, with regards to the Lussick thing, I think he's just too key for us. I think against Warrington, he showed how much he is needed. Um because Warrington scored their first try, and I hate bagging James Roby, but he gave away six again immediately before Warrington put the ball out wide and went in in the corner. Um, is that a bit of age rather than experience? 
Is it him just trying to pull the wool over the eyes? Who knows? But Joey Lussett came on and just provided us with that little bit of zip from dummy half, brings that kicking game, which he doesn't show a lot of, but his kicks downfield tend to turn people round, tend to shock them because they come that tackle early, put them on the back foot, and yeah, the winger might get their first, but the knock kicks that are not giving your chases a chance to get up there. They're not just, oh, I'm just going to just gonna pick something out here. You can see him picking it up and, and putting it into the corner. And we need him around the club. The only other way that he could come is if we did get a hooker, a, a proper hooker who has got, a proper experienced hooker is the phrase I'm after, come into the club. And that's not going to happen, is it? No. Despite why his season being over, they're not going to let Joe... Uh... Darrell Clark leave early. No. Um, do you know what? I bagged Joey Lussick on that play at Hull KR, which put them back in the game where he remember he went, he went wandering downtown. And I bagged him for that. And he's missed a couple of games since then. I didn't I left out the squad. Um, but to be fair, he's really he's changed my view quite a lot. Um to the point now where I, I really think he should be pushing for more game time, allowing James yeah. Roby to stay fresh. And I think, is it, I, I want to say it's been a little unfair in the past where we just talked about Joey Lussick as somebody to use as a body to allow James Roby to stay fresh when he's now putting in a level of performance that, in my eyes, if Daryl Clark is the player to arrive at the club next season, it shouldn't be seen as de facto that Daryl Clark is going to start at nine. Yeah, it's it's for me. It's Joey. It's Joey Lussick's time to step up, put his hand up, and say, "I am going to be your starting nine next year." And Daryl Clark can come off the bench and spell me, and you've got to take the shares off me. And I think he's at this moment in time, he's performing well enough to definitely outperform Daryl Clark. Yes, correct. And I know Paul Wellers has put his his hands up to the the whole game where he said it was a mistake leaving Joey out and left him as 18th man. Again, you, you say this with hindsight, but I do feel we've been alluding to it quite a bit through the season by saying I'd start Joey Lussick this week and give Roby a bit of time off. I wonder whether in hindsight and as I say, week by week when we've mentioned it, have we played Roby a bit too much? He played 60-odd minutes against Cass. Why? The game, you you put Joey Lussick on, he's going to do the same job. He's going to do the job of a hooker. Listen, Joey Lussick isn't a club legend like James Roby is, but he's still going to give you that, that same level. He's younger. He's, he is putting more kicks in. He, he just seems to give us a little bit more. I did against Warrington. Just gave us that little bit of zip when we needed it. So why he hasn't had them games earlier in the season, and I understand get Roby's uh, record appearance out the way, but this is where you should be giving him more games and showing what he can do. As you say, if somebody's coming into the club, unless they are on the up, and the superstar, they're the ones who've got to win the shirt. And you're right, in my opinion, Daryl Clark, if he comes in, has got to take the shirt off Joey Lussick, not the other way around. Yeah. Just as a quick point before we move on, I think this is the thing about, you see quite often on social media, some of our players getting bagged relentlessly. No, it, it becomes like flavour of the month, doesn't it? We can all, you can go on social media, you can pick certain names out and it doesn't matter how they do, they will always be in the firing line. Yeah. I think what we do is we'll comment on performances, but you keep your eyes open, judge them week by week and, and look at what's in front of you and not what just what you read. Yeah, it's what I try to do because we try to be balanced. Um, if somebody and, doesn't play well, we'll call them out and say they didn't yeah. play well. Like, yeah. I, I think I slated Will Hopawati's performance at Hull FC, amongst others. And then the two games since, I think he's been excellent. Yeah, he's been fantastic. 
He has, just and people will say fair. he's not been fantastic, but he has. He's done the job that he needs to do. He's not got the pace of a winger, but out there, he's doing the job that he needs to. There's not many who are going to be quicker than Matty Ashton um, or Matt Dufty when they get going. There's not. And that's where you do need a T. Ritson to have that speed in your back line. But T. Ritson's not available. Can't magic pace. Nope. Right, next one. Is this the most topsy-turvy season ever? Um, the league table does look like it's starting to balance out now with a top half and a Yorkshire side of the table. Um, and you have to say, teams are pretty much where they deserve to be, is it fair to say? And I want to say that I've seen a few comments on um, our social media about Lee saying, oh, they're always getting underestimated. They're absolutely not. Um, Lee, we've said it, we hear it being said amongst the fans on the terraces, no one is underestimating Lee ahead of next week um, they're playing really, really well there's no given that we're going to be going to Wembley um, if we get to Wembley, it's because we'll have earned the right to um, it's a good Lee side and Catalan, obviously where they deserve to be on merit for us, if we have any aspirations of finishing top of the table, we have to win on Thursday night, don't we? Yes. Yeah, we do. Um, the only one who's in a false position there go on. is Warrington. <laughs> well, they're not. Genuinely. because Well, they no, because, yes. because early season, early season, they were, they were, well, they won the league according to some of their fans. Yes. But, um, but as you say, it's settling down. There's two things I want to say. One, how fantastic is it that from us in third down to eighth, there are four points covering that, showing that anyone in this league can beat anyone else. I mean, we see that with 10th beating first um, last weekend, but you can beat anybody else. And the league table is changing all the time. It's what we've always wanted. Although I'd say that's due to a drop in standards compared to early days of Super League, kind of them them early ten first well, ten years. Is that is that the way it needs to be, Kev? Obviously, we if anybody goes through our episodes in the last four or five years, even when we've been top of the table, we have or I've definitely consistently banged on about. I want to be able to go to games and not know the outcome before I get there. I don't want to be going to Saints games as much as it's great to see us win and seeing us win 30 or 40 and that being the only thing to watch. I like the fact that aside from probably the bottom two, who you would expect to beat comfortably, the rest of the the table are capable of beating each other. Yeah. The second thing I, I want to say with regards to it is, I bet the Saints of three years ago wouldn't be uh, would be completely what seventeen from seventeen now because of the standard that's dropped. However, yeah. if someone had said to you at the start of the season, you're going to win the World Club Challenge, and then you're going to sit in third with a game in hand, four points off the lead, and you're playing you play them on Thursday night. Yeah, yeah, and, you take it, and do you know what? Yeah, the amount of pundits to and experts in the game who actually turned around and said Saints will feel it early year after the Australia tip, and I'll be honest, I didn't quite believe it, and I wasn't sure on it, and I thought we'd go better than we did, but they've been proved right. Yeah. But equally, now we seem to be rising a little bit. Obviously, if we win on Thursday. We're two points behind Catalan with a game in hand. Lee could potentially be top. Um, how good yeah. is it as well that a team has been able to come up from the championship, build the squad, and compete? Oh, it's it, it's great that it's not just a straight fight out between Lee and Wakefield at the bottom of the league, like it was last year where it was uh, Wakefield and Toulouse. And it's great. That I've got a decent squad. They've got a decent stadium, and now we'll be able to continue to build. Yeah, yeah, and 
a lot of props. I know there's been a bit of a check and past with it, but a lot of props have, have got to go to Derek Beaumont for having the vision and putting up um, for the players that they've got in, for the ones who've got the know-how. Now they're, they're going to start getting picked off. I've seen uh, Edwin Ipape has been linked with um, going back to the NRL. Um, and you see Lachlan Lambs linked with teams over there. And they will start getting other ones having a look and thinking, oh, yeah, we'd quite happily take that player off them. But as it is, there's no reason why they can't add to their squad and continue to be, and I'll, I'll just call it now, a top six club, where they do bobble about the top six, end up in the playoffs and build and build and build. Yeah. So we will wait and see. We will move on to the squads, Kevin. Yep. For Thursday night. So the aforementioned T Ritson drops out because uh, his knee isn't getting any better any quicker. Um, and Lewis Baxter has dropped out with Curtis Sirenen named and Dave's favourite, Dan Norman. I suspect Curtis Sirenen comes straight back in. Yep. And then it's a shootout between. George Delaney and Louis for the final bench spot. Now, without going over what we've just been saying, given that we look at Sioni playing in the middles next year and that's the role he's going to play, my feeling is Louis misses out and Sioni is used off the bench with Delaney and Parsi. That wouldn't surprise me. Um, I know there was a little bit of confusion with George Delaney's uh, HIA against Warrington, but he's obviously passed it. That's why he's in the squad and not going through the protocols. Um, it's whether we go with Delaney dropping out uh, because he is the young, raw one, and you go with Louis, Parsi, Sione, and Joey Lussick on the bench. There's a couple of decisions to make. I would... I would guess that what you've said is right. I can see him keeping George in just because he needs that experience. He doesn't need to play every week and we gave him a good block of games and then he had a couple of weeks off, then he went back to Swinton. Now he's back in the first team uh, squad and playing. Um, I think this would be good for his experience. You, you could easily make the argument for Louis to stay in given that oh. Catalan's got a big power. Correct. Correct. Do you know what? Whatever Wello thinks best, it's a toss of a coin, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm quite happy to go with with any of them them options. I don't think anyone necessarily weakens you. Um, you've either got the know-how of, um, of LMS or you've got the youthful exuberance of George Delaney, who um, he made... A twelve. Here we go. Stats. He made a twelve meter average gain with his carries on um, Friday night. I mean, he took four carries in. So let's balance that stat out a little. Can I make a big call? By the way, already, cool. if we get to a grand final and everyone is available, I don't want to be one for sentiment. But I would not want to see Louis miss out. Yeah, I get that. George will have enough grand finals to come when we win six, seven, eight, and nine that he can just carry the water this year. I want Louis to be in that team. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. I've no absolutely no problem with that. That's I just fine. think it'd be an awful way to not an awful I don't want to say an awful way because listen, he's had an absolutely amazing career, but I just think it'd take the cherry off the top if he wasn't in the team if we get there. Yeah, and I think um, Louis went to ninth in the uh, list of Super League appearances on Friday. And I think that's a stat that that has been... Yeah, a little. A little. I think that's massive. Um, With all the coaches he's played under... The fact that, and again, in a salary cap sport, he's been kept around. You see what he's like off the fields. 
you see what he's like on the field. It's the perfect balance of being on the right contract, being the right person, in the right place, at the right time. Again, because of his personality and the way he gets fired up and he plays the cheeky chappy role, does that underplay how good of a player he actually is? Possibly. I mean, one of my favourite uh, things about Louis is how much Wigan fans hate him. That's one of my, genuinely one of my favourite things. I don't necessarily want Wigan fans to, to like all of our players. So the fact that he's getting under their skin, probably the same that they think with Morgan Smithies and us, uh, or our fans, I, I love that. But you're right, he's played a number of positions for us. He's always turned up for us. And I think that I think that some people miss that. And I think that the we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago. When you're looking for something, you'll always find it. So you might miss a good performance from someone because you're looking at something else. And I think that if you're looking for fault, you will find that fault. And I think when people look for fault like that and have looked for faults in Louis's game, they found them because of that that bias. Uh, and I think it misses out the fact that, yeah, it's a salary cap sport and you can't just and you, we've got quarters and everything and you can't just bring in all Aussies and and what have you. But the wheels that the lad's got that he can move, he's been quick throughout his career, he's always been on the go forward. Um, everything about him just shows kind of what a professional he's been. Nothing more to say. Catalan squad. Yep. Uh, Arthur Morg, uh, Matthew Lager, sorry, that's just said in a Haydock accent, and Cesar Rouge have dropped out. I've got these written down because there's no way I'm remembering them. They've, But they have strengthened and strengthened quite a bit with Sam Tompkins, Mitchell Pierce, and Romain Navarrete coming back into the squad. Yeah, it is a 21-man squad, but Alrix de Costa has just been cut off the image at the bottom. Um, <laughs> is this a good time to be playing Catalans? Obviously, Arthur Morgan's out injured, but then... Sam Tompkins, in what could be his last appearance at the Totally Wicked Stadium, depending on how the playoff picture shapes up, um, he'll want to go out with a bang, won't he? Yeah, nailed, not nailed necess- on twice scorer. Yeah, n- not necessarily a great time to be playing him, to be fair. Um, they're going to have their tails up after getting turned over by Huddersfield, who, when we've played him a couple of times this year, have been proper powder, powder puff team been able to to kind of just push through them when needed, uh, especially at Magic. They were absolutely awful. Um, I don't necessarily think this is a good time, as you say, because the likes of Sam Tompkins and Mitchell Pierce coming back in means they can move Adam Kieran back into the centres. Um, they've got quick lads on the wing in Tom Davis and Tom Johnson. I think they'll they'll do what Warrington did and try and go wide against our lads because of our wingers not really having the pace and Tommy Makinson being at least another week away um, and T. Ritson not being in the squad as well. Um, yeah, I don't necessarily think it's a good time, but I think if we go toe to toe with our forwards, don't try anything stupid because I'd imagine that it's going to be slippery conditions. If we get a roll on early. Uh, I can see us. I can see us managing the game out. Yeah, my concern is with it being a Thursday night, potentially wet conditions. It could just be a very flat stadium. Yeah, which is what would suit the Dragons. Um, we need to obviously try and create some atmosphere a little bit, make a little bit of noise, and yeah, I, I can see us getting through it. But just, I don't think it's going to be more than. Six points in it. It's funny you say that because I was gonna say Saints by six when you asked me. There we go. I can't see it being tight. Um again, we're not really prolific at the minute. We're managing games if if anything. Um there's the, the Huddersfield game where we, we cut loose Wigan, we kind of dusted them well enough. 
But I think in games where teams are managing it and have enough of their big players there to, to deal with you, like these have, um, I think it's going to be a tight one as well, mate. Yeah. Uh, just before we finish, number 26, Manu Mao. Did you ever watch Mano Man with Chris Tarrant? Uh, I know of the programme, but it wasn't part of my Saturday night viewing, no. The only thing I can remember in that, I'm sure people used to get pushed in a swimming pool. Oh, fair enough, OK. Could be wrong, but we will see. Yeah. But we won't see, because I'm not looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I think I, I don't even know what it was about. Somebody will tell us on our Twitter, I'm sure. Um, yeah. I think we've warbled for long enough on this one, Kevin. Yes, that'll do. Right. Um, quite a busy show. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And we'll be back Thursday night. Thursday night? Thursday night for the instant reaction. Catch you soon. <laughs>